for the Americans among us, French fries, and a vegetable, and no bone. And it wasn't until McDonald's moved in in a big way that it became um, the way to eat burgers was in a bun. I mean, even be before, Bur uh, Bur before McDonald's came, we did have Wimpy. But, um, yeah, Wimpy had a bun on their burger. But most people, you eat the burger at home, it has no bun on it. I don't know. But now it's, it's traditional. Burgers come in buns. Fish don't come in buns, usually. That's really an American thing. I think because for years in England we've had fish and chips. French fries. And uh, to be fair, fish is not cut into squares so it fits into a sandwich bun. It's a fish with the bones removed, covered in batter, and then covered in more vinegar because that's good. Tartar sauce wasn't really a thing until McDonald's came into town either. Fish and chips, ketchup, and malt vinegar. Maybe Heinz baked beans or mushy peas if you're into those sorts of things. I like Heinz baked beans. Um, and maybe a slice of bread. But that was really traditional fare from a um, from a fish and chip shop. Sometimes you got. Big sausages, also covered in batter. I think sometimes some did some what Americans would call a pot pie, but I don't think they were fried. I do remember while I was living in a village in North Wales that um, the fish and chip shop, which was yeah, a couple of hundred yards down the road from where I lived. Uh, they would open at about 11 o'clock in the morning. 12.30 they'd close for lunch, for their lunch. Uh, they'd open again about 1 o'clock, 1.15, and stay open till about 2.30. And then the same again in the evening. They would, they would open and then they'd close for like 45 minutes for lunch and then they'd reopen for the rest of the evening and it's like very inconvenient I mean you knew you knew that's what they did but invariably I'd be sitting watching TV I'm getting hungry I fancy some fish and chips I'd run upstairs I'd open the front door stick my head up oh, yeah. it's supper time they're not open which was a little bit annoying. I don't even know if they're still there. I do know that the village itself has had some major development. Housing and they've got a marina and all sorts of things going on by the Menai Straits. But the house I lived in was still there. In fact, where I used to live in Harlow, um, I was doing a Google um, Street View. They've knocked down the swimming pool. That is completely gone. <coughs> now, when I moved into the place, we didn't have a lot of parking around our apartments. So if anyone came to, if, if I had one person come over, there was enough parking for one person. But if I was having a group of friends over, I would say, park in the swimming pool parking lot and walk over, because the swimming pool parking lot was free parking. And then they started charging for swimming pool parking. So that was an annoyance. Um, but the council was just charging for all parking all over the place, which means that coming to visit me wasn't quite so convenient anymore. 
but now yeah the parking lot's gone the swimming pool's gone there's a whole new sort of modern small apartments there all the way down that street now um, just there was a lot of open land opposite the uh, the sports field as well and that's all been developed so lots of changes the good point is is there's a new entrance or there's a new junction on the M11 um, which going from my house you would just have headed straight east into the country what was then the countryside and is now a wider road yeah more developed road that takes you up to the motorway for a new junction what I had to do was head south to the nearest junction and everybody in Harlow went to that junction in the morning and came through that junction on the way home in the evening and it was nightmare traffic if you went through at sort of 8 o'clock in the morning or 5.30, 6 o'clock at night So having that new junction is a vast improvement. Unfortunately, having lots of um, lots of new housing development probably doesn't make it any easier anymore. <coughs> the motorway probably hasn't been wider, so you've now got effectively twice as much vehicles on the motorway they just split between two junctions which are probably just as congested during rush hour morning and evening as the one was before they doubled the housing but at least they did it that's more than was going on in California when we lived there. In California, they decide, oh, there's 10,000 people living in this town. We're going to expand it to 20,000. We're not going to create any new motorway or highway connections. We're not going to um, widen the highway. We're not going to uh, improve the roads in the town. We're just going to build a whole bunch of new houses and connect them to what's already there and that's good they thought no that's horrible because your two-hour commute now becomes a three-hour commute because there's twice as many people in your city plus all the people in the adjacent cities who were already still there so uh, california does not plan well or does not plan their roadways well Texas, on the other hand, says we'll build a road here. We'll leave a gap for a second, you know, a second carriageway. We'll build some houses, and once it starts getting to the point where there's a sufficient people using the road, we'll build the second carriageway. So now it's a divided uh, road, and you've got cars travelling, you know, opposite directions on each lane. so you know that the whole plan of uh, we're gonna we're gonna put more people into this area um, you're not overstressing the roads when you do that because you've got built-in points of expansion and now we're seeing why we uh, the farmer goes that way across the field rather than this way because this is quite steep. This is probably also going to promote um, erosion because we're laying the soil in the direction of down the slope. As I said, we don't, we're getting this done as fast as possible so we're just going to do this we have 40 minutes left before the rains come and we might start getting stuck in the uh, dirt. 
and it's now 11 o'clock real time. So Mrs. Osa got up about an hour ago and moved to the couch and went to sleep. She she has some back issues, so she can't. Sometimes it gets to the point where it's just uncomfortable to lay down, so she'll sit on the couch and sleep. Teenage ghost had got up, used the bathroom, went back to sleep, so we're still all by ourselves again. Let's go, tractor, come on. So, once this field is done, we've done all the contracting or cultivation contracts for November. I don't think they generate new ones. Sometimes, I think if you do a harvesting contract, it may give you, within a couple of hours, a ploughing contract on that field. But if you don't do it, a lot of the times the farmer will do it themselves but then they won't generate new contracts for the rest of that month either. And go, come on, go, go, go. Oh, struggle, struggle, struggle. I think we are having a little bit of traction issues here. Not much. I think the wheels are slipping very, very slightly. And as we gain speed, obviously the traction's better. But I think that might be my choice in tyres. There, there is supposedly a difference in which tyres give the best grip. I just don't know what that is. I haven't done the tests. I don't really have the time to do the tests. If I had time to do the tests, I would have time to stream more frequently or something like that. Oh, the other thing to consider is it's three o'clock, oh, it's coming up to three o'clock in the afternoon and the sun will be setting very, very soon. Where is the sun? Kind of looks like it's midday, but it will be heading over that way. It's very low in the sky, so obviously, because Scotland and a long way from the equator. Okay, we've probably got two more rows here, and it might start raining, almost 60% done. Hey, 60% done with half an hour to go. It is somewhat possible that I might get this contract complete before the rain comes. Or I might be on a flatter bit of ground when the rain comes, so sinking into the mud isn't quite so problematic. Oops, I probably should have kept running while I lowered that. Okay, so we come back down the field, I think on the outside. And then we'll be working our way back across that way, filling in the zebra stripes. And so one hour is 20 minutes. So we've got about 10 minutes of real time before three o'clock, I think. Oh, the field's not square. Oh. So, quarter past 11, we should have rain. Quarter past 11 real time, we should have rain. We're not expecting much in the way of rain for Michigan for another week now. 77 degrees and sunny is what we're currently looking at.
So typically when I end this, I'll do a, you know, a three-row turnaround at this end. I'll turn left at the other end to fill in the gap, and then we're back to doing alternate rows. But uh, try to avoid turning into the adjacent row, because I have to use the gearbox for that. How's the tractors work? The tractor's down to 82%, so maintaining the tractor before this, we've pretty much used up 30% of the tractor's maintenance just doing these three contracts so far. If I hadn't fixed the tractor before we started, uh -uh, come on. If I hadn't fixed the tractor before we started, we would be down to, I guess, into the 50s, which would make the repair bill significantly higher than £3,000. Frankly, I don't mind gaming the system in order to make the credit drain manageable. I mean, obviously for crop sales, it's not necessarily um, something I can take advantage of with the setup I have. So for example, silage, con or silage uh, best time to sell is January. I've only got two silage um, bunkers on the farm, so I can only use, I can only do one cut in January, and then the others I just have to sell. Make sure I've sold it before it's time to fill it up again. So we make the money that we can. But it's good to know that whole crop silage is worth more. I don't think it's as um, uh, I'm gonna make up a word here. I don't think it's as yieldy as uh, maize. I think if you're looking for silage um, production, maize produces the most, but only produces it once a year. So. Grass is a good alternative because you can get three cuts of that per year. So while you don't get as much um, yield of grass as you do of maize in a given field, and we'll find that out in spring when we cut what was the maize field last year. Um, maize will yield the most, but it's only as valuable as grass silage, so, you know, take your pick, really. Do you want to do grass? Do you want to do maize? But whole crop silage, again, only yields once a year, and it doesn't yield as much as the maize. I don't know how it compares to grass, but um, it's worth 50% more. So I might want to look at doing some uh, whole crop silage when I get some more fields. It really depends what fields I buy. Um, I'm thinking of purchasing all of the grass fields in the immediate vicinity of the farm and then maybe looking at some of the others as well that are currently arable fields. The grass fields are good because they have breaks in the hedges into the next field. And the rain is starting. It is 10 minutes early. So we might not be able to get this completed now. And the thunder is here to Skidding. 
So the ground is getting slippery, but not muddy enough that we're sinking into it quite yet. We are 80% done. I was hoping to get to 90. But we'll keep watching. Obviously, as we start sinking into the mud, that will be the time that we just say, uh, yeah, we're kind of done at this point. I've, I've definitely got the wrong tyres here because those back wheels are spinning. Probably not going to make it up the hill, so we might pull it up at the end and call it at least a day as far as the contract goes. <coughs> we are now rolling down the hill, so we're doing okay. But those tyres are chucking up a lot of dirt now. So. Delayed fold on that. Anyway, we will turn that off, turn the engine off, and beam home. And it's raining in the shed. I thought they fixed that. Okay, and as we know, this this is now done. Fermenting. So we can take that out now. This is 25%, not even 25% yet. So we're going to have to wait a while for that. I guess we can check the weather for tomorrow. Do I check the weather here or do I just check on my phone? Who knows? Let's check the weather. Oh, weather, weather. Weather is... Okay, raining all day for the rest of the... Oh, all day for the rest of the day. Up to midnight. So one o'clock in the morning is going to stop. So about four o'clock in the morning, the ground will be dry. And we'll be able to pick up the contract from tomorrow. So we'll sleep through till eight, I guess. Uh, November 3 is going to have rain. But that might be the only rain it gets we'll have to check tomorrow to see the detail but i think for right now we'll check the store Ooh, looky what's that that's a wood chipper oh my goodness that's a huge cedar that uh, does not cultivate the ground has 15 meters working width and has a uh, absolutely no chance I have that amount of uh, horsepower to haul it and has 51 hours on it Woo and 40 months that thing is just a little mower oh and a Deutz series 8 Deutz what is that 287 horsepower that would be a good Compliment to the Valtra, I think. Anyway, let us go to sleep because there's nothing we can really do until morning at this point. It's going to be raining all of that day. And I have mud and rain paint, so the mud does actually uh, extend into four hours because we have, we're playing four four-day months into the dry spell. I think if I go check I can walk over here. Let's turn the we have water on the ground, we have deer. But this is now saying the ground is perfectly dry. So we can come out and continue our cultivating. First things first, I'm going to check with what the store has that would be good too. That's 400 horsepower, so that, it wouldn't be that good. This is a good fertilizer spreader, but it doesn't do lime, so it's not what I'm looking for. Class is still there, the Volvo is still there. The giant thing is still, oh, a milk truck. I don't need a milk truck right now, but if I did need a milk truck, that would be a good thing to get. Um, there's a flatbed, there's, oh, one of those. Didn't we just see one of those? right there. I have noticed that with this on, um, 
it does tend to double up some things. We had two electric tractors um, early on. What is that? That is, that's a cultivator. But as I said, we're using the horse stuff when we can. A T6, a T6 would be nice, 175 horsepower. Might take a look at details on that. Don't need one of those. Uh, yeah. What is that? That is a forage mixer. Takes a lot of stuff. Wow. Oh, a Zarian 3000 series. 335 to 379 horsepower. That would be fun. And that is a shallow cultivator, which needs 500 horsepower. So I guess I'm not having that. Um... That T6, however, um, is fitted with crop sensors. It does not have a front loader, it does not have a GPS. Um, it does have a three point at the front. It only has a 125 horsepower engine. Um, it would cost 25,000 more to give it 175. Oh, wow. 75,000 for that tractor. It's probably going to be there for a couple of hours or a couple of days. So I think the main thing we want to do right now is light this thing up like a Christmas tree. And um, finish this contract off. And I missed a bit. Okay, that's a legitimate I missed a bit. Now, 175 horsepower. Oops. Um, oh, we are skidding. Now, we're not sinking into the mud. We're just having problems going up the hill. That's a little bit of an issue here. Once we're moving, we, we, we do start to gain traction, but yeah, that's me and my tires. I should possibly consider switching these for something more agricultural, wider with weights. I mean, we should be getting the traction off the front because we do carry a weight, although I need to switch that back to the safety weight. If I get the, the New Holland, that probably has a better balance than the Kubota for hauling that little uh, spreader around. And with the Kubota, I could probably get a sprayer because front tank, rear tank. Um, the front tank would balance out the weight of the, the sprayer on the back. Anyway. Ah, oh, New Holland, 75,000. 25 trips of silage. Oh, so tempting. I mean, the other thing I can do is take a look at... Uh, we could borrow the money. We could look at the loans we have. Although I do think that we, we're looking at a slightly higher interest rate